In this tutorial video, we will learn about the methodology of scoring sleep stages and the movements in a real case study in accordance with the ASM guidelines version 2.5. We have 47 years old male. He has difficulty initiating and maintaining sleep, insomnia, daytime sleepiness, no snoring, and no choking attacks. Nocturnal polysomnography was performed using S4500 amplifier and RimLogic 3.4.1 software. First, we need to review the bike calibration profile. Here, what you see in the screen is the neurological traces. We have EOG signals, we have frontal, central, occipital channels, and we have the Chen EMG. Time base is 30 seconds, and epoch number is 104. According to what we see here over the EOG traces, we have very obvious blinks, and according to the ASM guidelines, when we have blinks, then we score active wakefulness. To view the hypnogram of that patient from the menu bar, we go to view and we select to display hypnogram. We will use the hotkeys assigned for scoring sleep stages. Zero for wakefulness. One, four in one. Two, four in two. Three, four in three. And five to score REM. We will press 0 to score wakefulness. Here, eyes are closed and we have alpha rhythm making the majority of the entire epoch duration. And those alpha rhythms are maximal over the occipital channels. So this is quiet wakefulness. Eyes closed and continuation of alpha which makes more than 50% of the entire epoch duration wakefulness eyes closed alpha makes more than 50% of the entire epoch duration no attenuation of alpha no attenuation of alpha and we have reading eye movements active wakefulness eyes closed and we have alpha rhythm that makes more than the entire epoch duration blanks and reading eye movements and at the end we have closed eyes and we have alpha rhythm so this is wakefulness continuation of wakefulness 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 eyes are still closed and alpha makes more than 50 percent so we continue as wakefulness 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 we started to have slow eye movements at the end of this epoch but alpha makes more than 50 percent of the entire epoch duration so continue as wakefulness. Here we started to have more slow eye movements and we have some micro sleeps but the majority is comprised of alpha rhythm so this is wakefulness. Same here alpha makes more than 50 percent and we have some micro sleep and here we have significant attenuation of alpha rhythm and low amplitude mixed frequencies which make the majority of the epoch so this is my sleep onset and we press 1 to score in 1 in this epoch we have a significant abrupt increase in the EG frequency so does this fulfill ASM criteria to score an arousal event according to the rules arousals should be scored during sleep stages in 1 in 2, in 3, or REM 
if there is an abrupt shift of EEG frequency, including alpha, theta, and or frequencies higher than 16 hertz, but not spindles, it should last uh, 3 seconds, should be preceded by stable sleep of at least 10 seconds. However, during gram, it must be associated with a concurrent increase in chin EMG tone of at least 1 second. This is 30 second window. We have EOG, we have EEG, frontal, central, and occipital, and we have the chin. In the first part, we have low amplitude mixed frequency, which makes more than 10 seconds. And from this point, we started to have an abrupt shift in the EG frequency, and that makes more than 3 seconds. So this event should be scored as an arousal, and the stage should be scored as wakefulness because alpha makes more than 50% of the entire duration. According to the rules, we can score this event as an arousal. We have alpha rhythm that makes more than 50%, so this epoch should be scored as wakefulness. And here we have significant attenuation of alpha, and we have low amplitude mixed frequencies, which make more than 50% of the epoch duration with slow eye movements, so this epoch is in 1. Continue as in 1, we have more obvious slow eye movements. Here we have an abrupt increase in the EG frequency, which makes more than 3 seconds, and this is preceded by more than 10 seconds of sleep. So we score this event as an arousal. As per the ASM guidelines, there is no rule or no definition to define the offset of the arousal event. We have alpha that makes more than 50% of the epoch duration, so this epoch should be scored as wakefulness. Alpha makes more than 50% of the epoch, so this is continuation of wakefulness, attenuation of alpha, and it's replaced by LAMP, low amplitude mixed frequencies, with slow eye movements. However, at the end portion, we started to have an abrupt increase in the EG frequency for more than 3 seconds. However, the epoch itself should be staged as N1. Continuation of slow eye movements. The majority of the epoch is comprised by lamp. However, here we started to have an abrupt increase in the EG frequency for more than 3 seconds. The epoch should be scored as N1 continue as in 1, continue as in 1, continue as in 1, another increase in the EG frequency, continue as in 1, we have insignificant increase in EG frequency here, in terms of duration, so there is no arousal, and we score this as in 1. Continue as in 1. We have a significant increase in the EG frequency, or an abrupt shift in the EG frequency, which makes more than 3 seconds. The majority of the epoch is comprised by alpha as a result of the arousal, and this epoch should be scored as wakefulness. We have some bursts of alpha. However, this makes less than 3 seconds, so there is no arousal. The epoch is in 1. Slide movements and length. 
So this is in one. We have an abrupt increase here. The book is in one. And this is in one. Continue as in one. So this epoch here should be staged as in one. However, at the end portion, we have a K complex. A K complex is defined when it starts with a negative component and that ends with a positive component. The duration of the K complex is measured from the zero line preceding the onset of the event to the zero line following the positive component and this has to be more than 0 0.5 seconds so as a result of the k complex that is present at the end portion of this epoch this will be an indication to score the next epoch as in two so this epoch is in one and the following epoch should be scored as n2. Once we start scoring n2, we continue to score the next epochs as n2 unless there is any indication to stop scoring n2, like if there is an arousal, if there is a transition to n3, and if there is a transition to REM sleep. So, there is no indication to stop scoring N2. As a result of that, we continue to score N2 for this epoch. Again, there is no reason to stop scoring N2 here. Here, there is an arousal. And arousal is an indication to stop scoring N2. So after the arousal, we have slow eye movements and we have lamp that makes more than 50% of the entire epoch duration so this epoch should be scored as in 1 continue as in 1 however here we have an abrupt increase in the EG frequency so this epoch should be scored as in 1 another abrupt increase in EG frequency here this epoch should be scored as in 1 from the previous part of the epoch we started to have another increase So there is another arousal here. So from the offset of this arousal to the onset of the next arousal, we have obvious sleep, stable sleep, which makes more than 10 seconds. So we can score the next arousal. This is in one, continue as in one. There is another arousal. In one, continue as in one, continue as in one, in one. So when you score in one, you divide the epochs into two halves. You look at the second half. If there is an indication of in two for the next epoch, then we keep it in mind and we go forward and we score the epoch accordingly. Here, we don't have any indication or sleep signature for in two. So this epoch is in one. And the next epoch is in one unless there is an indication for scoring in two in the first half of the next epoch. There is no indication for N2 here, so this is N1. In the second half, there is no indication to score the next epoch as N2, so this one is N1. And here we have spindle that is located in the first half of this epoch, so this is an indication to score N2 again. We continue to score in two. No reason to stop scoring in two. Continue as in two. However, here we have 
Anna Rosen. And here we have three stages. This part is continuation of N2 because the previous epoch was called as N2. We have alpha, which makes seven seconds, and here the majority of this epoch is comprised by lab. In 2016, ASM proposed a new rule to score those tricky epochs. So according to the new rule, here we have one epoch, and we have three different stages. We have alpha, which makes 12 seconds. We have length, so this is in one, and makes 11 seconds. And here we have seven seconds of N2. N1 comprises the greatest portion, so this epoch should be scored as N1. So this is N1. Continue as N1. Spindles in the first half of the epoch, so this is an indication for N2. Continue as N2. Continue as N2. No reason to stop scoring N2. And here, there is an abrupt shift in EG frequency, which makes more than 3 seconds. So, the majority of this epoch is comprised by N2. However, the next epoch should be scored as N1 as a result of this arousal. So, this part is N1, and we have another arousal. And the remain part following the arousal has length, so this is in one. Spindle in the first half of the epoch, so this is indication for in two. Continue to score in two. Continue to score in two. No reason to stop scoring in two. No reason to stop scoring in two. Continue as in two. Continue as N2, continue as N2, there is no reason to stop scoring N2, continue as N2, continue as N2, continue as N2. Here there is an indication to stop scoring N2, and this is because of the abrupt increase in the EG frequency. So this is an arousal. But here, also we have K-complex in this part, and N2 makes the majority of the epoch, so this should be scored as N2. Continue as N2. Continue as N2. Continue as N2. No reason to stop scoring N2. And here, we need to pay attention, because the chain EMG tone starts to be lowered. However, we have spindles at the end portion of this epoch, so we continue as N2. Another increase in chain EMG tone, so we continue as N2. We score this as N2, but also, if you look at the end portion, we started to have low tone, so we pay attention to that for the next epoch. There is significant attenuation of chin tone. However, we still have K-complexes and we have an arousal. So we score the arousal event and we score this epoch as N2 because the majority of this epoch is comprised by N2. After the arousal, we have alpha rhythm that makes more than 50% of the epoch duration. We have closed eyes with alpha, and then we have active wakefulness. We have eye movements, and also we have movement artifacts superimposing EEG signals. And look at the chin EMG tone that became very high. So this is wakefulness. Continue as wakefulness. Wakefulness. With fullness. Here there is significant attenuation of alpha, presence of lamp, more than 
slow eye movements. So this is in one. And here we started to have abrupt shift in the EG frequency for more than three seconds. That is preceded by more than 10 seconds of sleep. So this is an arousal event. And the epoch is in one. And here there is an abrupt increase in EG frequency for more than three seconds. So this is wakefulness. In this epoch, lamp makes more than 50% of the epoch duration. And here we started to have an abrupt increase in EAG frequency, which is an indication of an arousal. So this is in one. Active wakefulness, rapid eye movements, and here we have closed eyes and alpha rhythm, maximal over the occipital region. So this is wakefulness. Continue as wakefulness. Here we have significant attenuation of alpha rhythm with slow eye movement on the AOGs. And here we have lamp, which makes more than 50% of the entire epoch duration. So this is in one. Continue as in one. Continue as in one. Continue as in one. And here we have an indication to start scoring in two because of the key complex in the first half of the epoch. So this is N2, continue as 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 N2. No reason to stop scoring in two. There is significant attenuation of Chini MD tone. And here, this is a tricky epoch. It can be tonic REM episode and it can be continuation of N2. Let's go to the PowerPoint and review those new rules. In figure A, epoch number 50, we have open eyes, we have rapid eye movement, so this is definite wakefulness. In 51, closed eyes, no alpha. This patient doesn't generate alpha rhythm. This is why it's important to review the bicalibration profile because some patients don't generate alpha rhythm. And this can be really very tricky. Slime movement finding is a very important finding in these cases to support scoring in one. Since it's not present in 51, then we score this epoch as wakefulness. In 52, eyes closed and the first half of the epoch doesn't show any SEM finding so this is wakefulness however at the end portion of 52 we have a SEM finding which supports that the next epoch should be scored as N1 second half of 53 doesn't have any steep signature for N2 so 54 should be scored as in two, only if there is a sleep signature for in two in the first half of the epoch. In B, in epoch number 60, eyes open and we have rapid eye movement, so it's definite wakefulness. 61, eyes closed, no alpha, no sim finding, so this is wakefulness. 62, we have sim finding in the first half of the epoch. So this is an indication that this is in one. 63 is continuation of in one as there are no sleep signatures for in two in the first half. 64, we got K complex in the first half of the epoch, which is an indication to score in two sleep. The other rules concerning REM episodes and to differentiate between tonic REM and phasic REM, the following rules should be applied. In figure A, epoch number 50, we have alpha, we have SEM, Chini MG tone is high, so this is a definite wakefulness. 51, we have alpha, which makes more than 50%, we have SEM, 
and we have absent tone. So since we have alpha more than 50%, it's a definite wakefulness. In 52, we have lamp, we have rapid eye movement, and tone is absent, so this is definite phasic current episode. 53, we have lamp and no rapid eye movement, so just we continue to score as REM sleep. In D, 60, we have alpha, sem, and chin tone is high, so this is definite wakefulness. 61, we have LAM, we have SEM, absent tone for the entire epoch, so this is definite in one as a result of the SEM episodes. 62, we have LAM, no SEM, and no tone, so in this case, we need to keep it in mind, we go forward and see if there is definite phasic REM episode. 63, we have phasic episode of REM as a result of the rapid eye movement and the absent tone. So we go back and score 62 as a tonic REM episode as it is contagious to the definite REM episode in 63. C, epoch number 70, we have alpha, we have SEMS and we have high tone. This is different wakefulness. 71, we have LAM and no alpha and absent tone. So we don't know, we have no clue. We keep it in mind and we go forward. 72, we have LAM and we have no alpha. Tone is still absent. So we have no clue. We go forward to 73 and look if there is any clue for that 73 we have a phasic REM definite phasic REM episode as a result of the rapid eye movement so we go back and score 72 and 71 as tonic REM episodes there are some other new rules to help you in differentiating between tonic REM and phasic REM in figure A epoch number 50 we have key complex in the first half and the tricky part here is the absent tone. 51, we have also indication for N2. So the time in between the first key complex and the next key complex has no interruption by an arousal or by rapid eye movement. So this is definite N2 time. So 50 should be scored as N2. 51. Here there is a K-complex and we need another K-complex at the end portion or the next epoch in order to score these epochs as N2. In 51, we have no other episode of K-complex or spindle, so we keep it in mind. We go forward to 52. 52, there is also no clue, no indication for uh, sleep signatures of N2, so we keep it in mind and we go forward for 53. In 53, we have rapid eye movement, so this is a definite phasic cream. We go back to 52 and 51 and score them as definite tonic REM episodes because they are contagious to the phasic REM episodes. B, in epoch number 60, we have a complex in the first half. However, chin EMD tone is absent here, which is the tricky part. We keep it in mind and we go forward for the next epoch. And the end portion of 61, we have a complex, so we have no interruption of N2 as a result of those consecutive K complexes in epoch number 60 and 61. So this is N2. 62, we need another K complex at the end portion here to score this as in two, otherwise we keep it in mind and we go forward. 63 has no sleep signature for in two, so we keep it in mind and I'll go for 64. 64, we have rapid eye movements, so this is phasic cream episode. We go back and score 62 and 63 as definite tonic REM episodes. In figure C, 70 we have a complex 
and we have also an arousal following that k-complex but it's not associated with that k-complex because of the long duration so this is definite in two after the arousal in 71 we don't have any clue to score this epoch chenium detone is still absent keep it in mind go for 72 no clue we'll go to 73 this is phasic rem episode this is definite rem we go back and score 72 and 71 as tonic rem so these rules should only be applied when you have absent tone according to that what we see here is absent tone and if you go back to the previous epoch we have spindles and epoch number 217 we need another spindle or key complex at the end portion to score this epoch as in 2 here we have a key complex and it's in the middle so this epoch should be scored as in 2 here the tone is still absent and we have the complex here in this part so there is no interruption so it is definite in 2 we have spindles here spindles here tone is absent so this is definite in 2 we don't have any clue here we don't have any sleep signature at the end portion to score this as in 2 so we keep it in mind and we go forward there is an indication for N2 here, which is the K complex. So we go back and score this epoch as N2. Here, we need another K complex or spindle at the end portion of this epoch, or in the next epoch, in order to score this as definite N2. Otherwise, we need to look for rapid eye movements to score this epoch as tonic RAM. And in the next epoch, we have spindle. So we go backward and score this epoch as definite in two, though we have absent tone. And here we have an abrupt increase in the EG frequency for more than three seconds. So this is an arousal. The majority of this epoch is comprised by N2, so this epoch should be scored as N2. If you look here, after the arousal, the Chen EMG tone failed to remain low. So, you need to keep an eye on the chin EMG tone and the changes to the tone for the next epochs. So, this is N1. Continue as N1. This is N1. Okay, complex here. This is N2. And the tone here started to be low. There is no rapid eye movements which makes it difficult for us to score it as basic trim, definite trim. So we need to look for other key complex or spindle at the end of this epoch or in the next epoch. So we keep it in mind, we go forward. There is no clue here. We go forward. So this is phasic trim. Here we started to have rapid eye movements. Tone is absent. So this is a definite from episode we go backward and we score loose tricky epochs as tonic rem so this is tonic rem tonic rem and this is phasic rem so we continue to score as rem sleep unless there is an arousal or transition to n2 here, at the end portion of this epoch, we started to have an abrupt increase in the EG frequency. So there is an arousal. The epoch itself should be scored as REM sleep because the majority is comprised by lamp and REM. And if you look at the chin MD tone, as a result of the arousal, it started to be high, which is one of the requirements to score arousals in REM sleep so we score this epoch as REM sleep 
and we score this epochasmic fullness here because of the continuation of the alpha and a significant increase in the Chen EMG top. So as per the physiatric history for that patient, there is no evidence of respiratory related sleep problem. Now we need to understand why sleep architecture was fragmented with multiple arousals and we need to look for the limb movements. So we don't score limb movements during wakefulness and here as you see we added the uh, left leg and right leg and we go for the first sleep episode. This slide illustrates how to identify an isolated limb movement. Baseline resting EMG is defined when the amplitude is lower than plus minus 5 microvolt and an event onset is defined when the amplitude goes higher than 8 microvolt above the resting EMG and it ends when the amplitude goes lower than 2 microvolt above resting EMG for more than or equal to 0 0.5 seconds. Other rules, limb movements can be associated with arousals if they are overlapped, like in this example, and it can happen regardless which comes first. Also, they are considered associated with each other if the duration from the offset of a limb movement to the onset of the arousal is less than 0.5 seconds, also regardless which comes first. Periodic limb movement disorder is defined as a repetitive stereotypic episodes of limb movements. This can happen in both legs and it can alternate from one limb to another. There should be a minimum of four limb movements with a period length that is higher than five seconds and lower than 90 seconds. Another important rule like you see here in this example, we have four epochs and we have five movements. We have two movements in the first epoch here, one movement here, and the fourth movement is located uh, during an epoch that was scored as wakefulness. And there is another movement that happened um, on the following epoch that was staged as in one. So the one that happened during wakefulness should be excluded because we don't score the movements during wakefulness. So in order to achieve the sequence of four limb movements, we measure the period length from the onset of the third movement to the onset of the fourth movement that happened after the stage of wakefulness epoch and this has to be less than 90 seconds in order to consider the fourth movement as part of the sequence. So this event cannot be scored as a limb movement as the epoch is wakefulness. So we we'll go for the next epoch. Here is N1 and here this epoch is wakefulness there is a movement, but we can't score it because the epoch is with fullness. We go for the next. This is in one sleep. This movement is not associated with any arousal. We move next. Another movement here. We move next. This is in two sleep, and here we have a significant movement. And this movement is associated with that arousal. Move next. Another limb movement. So here we have two movements, one on the left side, one the on the right side. The duration is less than 5 seconds, so we consider them as 
only one single movement we consider the first one and it's overlapped by this arousal this is in one and again we have another limb movement that is associated and overlapped with that arousal if you change the time base to three minutes and go back then we can see the correlation between those movements and the periodicity of those movements. This is the end of the video.